Hi, how are you? My name is Jim McGuire, your host tonight, and tonight we have a very important show about date violence. Uh, this is something that you'll see uh, on the news at night. You know, people getting hurt, involved in these type of things, and uh, it's something that really should be controlled, I think. Uh, what it really comes down to is, uh, you know, if you have a date and somebody says no, uh, you're supposed to listen to the word no. If somebody says, I want to go home now on a date, it's time to go home, I want to go home, you have to take the person home. Or if it's something like, uh, I don't want to drink no more alcohol, that's it. No more alcohol. You got to go along with that, okay? So that's what our show is about tonight. I just want to mention, we have with us tonight some wonderful ladies from the uh, Women Resource Center. And I'll tell you who they are, and then they'll introduce themselves, okay? Sure. We have the Executive Director, Ann Ellsworth, is here tonight. Ed, yes. thanks for coming, Annie. You're welcome. We have a victim's advocate, Ashley Retta, who's here. Thank with, you. She's with the uh, Women Resource Center. And we have Laureen Gorstein, a, a student who's going to be going to college, and she's now with the, uh, helping with the Women's Resource Center. Thanks for coming. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for having us. Thank you, girls. So, Ann, you want to say something about, uh, you know, your I'd involvement? Be happy to. And why is this such an important topic? Okay, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, the issue of domestic violence has really been addressed for probably the last 35 years in a really focused and uh, organized way. And what we've found is that violence in relationships it happens whether you're in a domestic relationship, whether you're living together, married, um, it doesn't really matter. Violence in a relationship is a negative, is something that needs, that, that needs attention. And when we started to look at the different relationships where violence existed, dating relationships were just as significantly affected by violence um, as, say, an intimate relationship is in terms of marriage or living together. And so when you talk about dating violence, a lot of the focus goes towards teens who are just beginning to enter um, the dating world. Um, it sometimes is based on an individual date, but it's also a long-term issue that kind of builds over time. And so we really feel like it's important to bring attention to dating violence, that it's not just about what's going on in a home, but also what's just going on in relationships. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Ed. How sure. about you, Ashley? What do you think of uh, this particular subject and your connection with the women's resources? Um, well, I do a lot of work in the schools around dating violence, and I work with high school students um, to talk about what healthy relationships look like and what healthy relationships shouldn't look like. Um, so, for instance, a statistic, one in four. Um, one in four teens are affected by dating violence. Um, so that's 25%. Um, so it's a, it's a very prevalent issue, and to define dating violence, to just kind of put it bluntly, is, is any kind of... Um, Violence or uh, aggressive behavior, verbal uh, verbal accusations, excessive jealousy. It doesn't just have to be physical violence to be considered dating violence. So it could be like verbal put downs. Absolutely. Like you're ugly. Absolutely. Or they, like, you, like you know things like that. Absolutely. That really hurts a person. And it's over over a course of time that prevents um, so many teens and and young adults from getting out of those harmful relationships. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ashley. How about you, Lori? Could you tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, your involvement with the Women resource? Sure. Um, I've been involved with the Women's Center for a few years now. Um, I first started uh, working with the center when I was completing my Girl Scout Gold Award in 2011. Um, for my Gold Award, I decided to take my two passions, softball and women's rights, to create my project called Strike Out Domestic Violence. And I wanted to take, um, since softball is a sport that empowers young women, I wanted to take the, um, the strength and the pride that that sport gives them and develop it even further. So I worked with the Yorktown Athletic Club, and um, I was able to go to a lot of different practices for the softball girls and visit a lot of different age groups to speak with the parents and spread information about domestic violence. Um, I also encouraged them, the parents, to talk to their kids when they felt the time was right and appropriate about the subject. Um, I also, with YAC, was able to, uh, re with YAC, I was able to sell food and refreshments at local tournaments. Yeah, that was um, amazing, yeah. Very good, yeah. yeah. Raise a lot of money. To raise a lot of money for the center. And with some, with all the money that we raised from the concession stands at the tournaments, and after receiving some really generous donations from some parents, I was able to buy some shelter items and to purchase a street banner for the center that they hang up every February. So every February we get to put up a sign across a street, often in Yorktown. Um, although we moved, we're moving it around to different towns where it calls attention to Teen, teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And that was because of all the work Lauren did to raise oh, awareness for it. So now we have a banner that's created just for us that says um, uh, February is, is National Teen mm -hmm. Dating Violence Awareness Month. And it has our information on it so that if a, a young adult or a, a teenager or even an adult who's in a dating relationship sees that, 
they'll know to call us for help if that's what they need. Oh, very good. Does this happen with older people too? Absolutely. Like it could be any age? Yeah, I mean really the, the difference is dating is dating. I yeah. mean people are dating yeah. in their 70s, they're dating in their 40s, or, right, right. you know, it's, it's often the beginning of relationships where, um, or when young people are just starting to date that it, it often gets seen yeah. because they're, they're trying to learn out how to, how to create a relationship together. And that's when a lot of bad habits are, are expressed. And that's where a lot of control right. issues come up. And a lot of times, um, whether you're a teen or an adult, putting someone down is a way of controlling them, as a way of making sure that they stay with you. It's a really, it's a terrible thing to watch to see a person of any gender made to feel less than in a relationship. Yeah. Relationships are supposed to make us feel empowered and sure. safe and supported. Right. Um, and when you're 40 years old or you're 14 years old and you're dating someone, it's really important that that other person respects you. And that really is where we, we like to start. Yeah. Respect sure. in general Very for good. all people. Yeah. What is the most common age for the abuse? Is it like 15 to something? Like as far as young people go? Well, for teenage dating abuse, I would say anywhere between 13 and 18. Um, the younger that they start dating, you know, they haven't really developed their, their own maturity yet. So it's, it's we do see it, um, not so much the physical stuff, but, and, and the media plays in a lot with this and what mm -hmm. people are absorbing um, when they listen to songs on the radio or, you know, watch TV. Um, the relationships that they watch on TV and they try to mimic those and it's not always the healthiest situations. Right, very true. Uh, is there a telephone number you could mention, Anne, if somebody Absolutely. needed to contact you for an emergency? Yes, we have a 24-hour hotline. It's 845-628-2166 and you can call that 24 hours a day um, and you can speak to um, a, either a, it will always be a staff person and they've all been trained um, in what a, a, pick, a victim of violence needs at that time. And so really it's just an opportunity to ask questions. If someone really needs to get out immediately, we can help them get into shelter that, that second. Um, or we can set them up to speak to a counselor or an advocate. And everything at our agency is confidential and it's free. Do you have shelters in this area? We have uh, one shelter hidden away because all domestic violence shelters are confidential. Um, and then every county has, has domestic violence shelters that are hidden away. We all sort of work um, in conjunction with each other so that if a victim and their children are not safe in a county they live in, we can help them move to another county under, under confidentiality laws so that they can be safe wherever they are while they work through the violence. Uh, do you go to schools too to counsel? You want to say something actually about going to a school and doing things? Absolutely. I, mean, I don't do the counseling in the schools, but like I said, I provide workshops and presentations for both parents and students, um, primarily about healthy relationships and unhealthy relationships and what dating violence looks like because so many times you talk to young students who are in a relationship and they don't even acknowledge that mm -hmm. they're in an abusive relationship because it's become so normalized in our society. Mm -hmm. So um, we like to spread awareness by giving people the facts of what dating violence look like. Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs? Um, how can you help somebody get out of an abusive relationship? What's important to be supportive um, of your friends and your peers when you're in that kind of a situation? Do you find that the, the, the kids receptive to it? Do they like to hear this? Yeah. They, they do, and again, like I said, a lot of them aren't even aware that they're in these particular situations because it's become so normal to them and they've been in this relationship for maybe six months, but when you're 13, that seems like a really long time. Right. And um, so you kind of get swept up in that and you don't acknowledge that the way that I'm being treated when I'm getting 5,000 text messages mm -hmm. in an hour or right. I'm getting 20 questions as to where I am and who I'm going, and mm -hmm. um, I'm being told what to wear, what not to wear, who I can hang mm -hmm. out with, where right. I, where I can, can and can't go. Those are things that become normal to, to young people, and they don't acknowledge that this is not the way that I should be treated. At first, people are nice, but then after about a month, they get to know you, then one they start the, the abuse, right? Yeah, one you of know? the, one of the main say. things that I like to tell the students, as much as it may be uh, kind of in your face, is I say, you know, an abuser is not gonna punch you on first date. It's not going to happen because if he punched you on the first date or she, um, you would you'd be out of there in a second. Right. So it con mm -hmm. it's 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 over time. It's over a period of time that these small things build up and to become an, ab an abusive relationship. It's like the frog in the warm water, Absolutely. and you keep putting the heat up. You know, so after a while, <laughs> I love that the poor frog you is roasting. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. that's what and happens. Then I think it's really important to know that. Yeah. I, I think some of the issues with society and domestic violence and dating violence is that. We all expect it to be as if a stranger w walks up to us on the street and punches us in the face. Right. We all would re uh, react immediately. But when it's a personal relationship, there's other levels of 
concessions that are given. Oh, they didn't mean it. Oh, it'll get better. Right. Oh, they apologized. And as you said, it's the water. Right. It gets hotter over time, and then all of a sudden you don't realize the water's boiling, right. and then you're right. you're in this relationship that's really dangerous. I was going to ask you, is, is that a sense of power for the person to do this? Absolutely. Uh, power, but power and control. Terrible way to get power over somebody. <laughs> It is. Yeah, what a right. thing to do. No, and I think the way you, you said it is really, um, really key because really having that power over anyone makes it not an equal relationship. Okay. So in any relationship that's healthy, having equal, having an equality in that relationship in how you feel about them and how you respect them, right. it has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with right. age. It really is about basic respect. Right. right. You know, I was just wondering, you know, uh, with the, uh, the, uh, uh, I guess you would call it the proliferation of, of the internet mm -hmm. and all yeah. that's on there now, you know, Absolutely. Uh, the, especially the pornography. Do you think that somehow lessens the, uh, the image of women in the eyes of people? Yes. Do you want to say something about it? Sure, I think it, I think it absolutely does. I mean, I think anytime you objectify a person, you take away their human capabilities, your hu their, their human characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that by having adult rated movies um, and scenes and magazines, you know, in in a culture that kind of accepts it, uh, does do a lot of damage mm -hmm. to relationships because I think there are a lot of expectations that then come from those images and those movies um, in terms of a power struggle and who you know who comes out on top. And mm -hmm. like Anne mentioned, it you know it really dating violence, domestic violence, intimate partner violence. None of it really has anything to do with gender because we see it happen with men and teenage boys just as often as we see with with teenage girls. So it's it's not about the physical; it's about having power and control over somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Anne? Is similar I to agree. That? I, I feel very similar to that. I okay. think that we all kind of come from yeah. that, that same place. And any time anyone is lessened in another person's eyes, they lose credibility, they lose their power. Yeah. And right. so when we try and take someone's power away, it really is to just build the other person up. It really has more to do with the insecurities and the limitations of that person mm -hmm. who's the abuser, mm -hmm. no matter what their gender is. I mean, one of the misperceptions that I'm always trying to um, address in our community is that the Women's Resource Center has been around for 35 years. Yes. And because we're called the Women's Resource Center, folks mm -hmm. believe that boys and men are not served by us. And really anyone who walks through our do door is served. We mm -hmm. are not anti any gender, we're anti-violence. Mm -hmm. And our job is to address an anti-violence work. So if a young boy comes in and has experienced domestic violence in his home, we will work with him and give him counseling with our children's therapist to help him know that he has nothing to do with that domestic violence. Mm -hmm. If a teenage girl comes in who's been in a dating relationship that's violent, emotionally, physically, um, spiritually, she'll know that it wasn't her fault. If a 15-year-old boy comes in, same thing. Adult mm -hmm. male comes in, same thing. And mm -hmm. so what we really look at is what's the issue that brings them in the door and what will we be able to provide them to give them the strength to take their next step. Because we don't do anything but give them the space to make that decision and feel right. more empowered. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, it's a misperception that, that continues um, to keep people, I think, away from, from getting the help they need. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to continue to have this conversation, especially to reach out to the young boys who mm -hmm. are in dating relationships, um, because I don't know how many of them had access to understand that mm -hmm. they're just as likely to be the victim in an abusive relationship instead of the abuser. Um, so it's I, I, I've had young boys come forward after I've given a presentation and kind of talk to me about their relationship and, and how much it's negatively, negatively affected them. <laughs> and I think it's really important to continue to have this conversation with, with everybody, regardless of gender or of sexual orientation or, or, or status. What do you think, Lorraine, about this? Uh, definitely. Topic? I think yeah. that um, this is an issue that can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if you may feel embarrassed or you may feel scared to come forward, it's, it's important to seek help because whenever your safety is, is questioned, then you need to find a way to um, protect yourself mm -hmm. and to maintain your self-esteem, your confidence, and yeah. Right, you know, awesome. I went to Catholic schools, you know, mm -hmm. and I was educated by the De La Salle brothers. They were founded yes. in France in 1650, and they came to the United States to mm -hmm. educate the inner city kids in, uh, in 1850. Mm -hmm. They went wow. all over the United States. Manhattan College is one of the places yeah. they found oh, yeah. Yeah, right. So they used to tell us when I used to be in school, you know, in eighth grade, mm -hmm. first grade, you know, guys, when you're on a date, you know, you have to behave yourself. You got to remember, treat the, the girl like she's your mom or your sister. Mm -hmm. And they used to tell us this all the time. Right. And that right. used to stay with us, you know. Mm -hmm. So it isn't so much the parents telling you that, it's an outside force telling you an authority to mm -hmm. behave. Like, right. I don't know if they right. do that in schools today, do they? 
I don't know that they, you know. they teach, especially in Catholic schools, I think yeah. they taught us more about yeah. our yeah. moral decisions yeah. than, than we, I think they approach in, in public schools. Yeah. But, and, that, and I think it's just because of the way they're set up nowadays. But yeah. I really think as an outside agency, we have that responsibility. Um, to support the parents in having those conversations and mm -hmm. those other community organizations, whether it's Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts mm -hmm. or the 4-H, yeah. where young people are involved in ways that really help them build their self-esteem and their right. self-identity. Mm -hmm. And that's where they can learn those things. Right. Because I think you're right, it's not said in a regular yeah. way right. nowadays. I mean, when, we were, when, when I was a child as well, <laughs> I, will not, I will not put my age in here, but when, <laughs> when I was a child, yes, there was an assumption about how you were treated. Um, yeah. on a date. And now yeah. it's, it's just different. Yeah. And so we need to protect our children, we need to protect our young adults, right. and we yeah. need to protect our adults right. from these kinds of relationships yeah. so and that they feel empowered, whoever they are. Yeah, and I think the use of technology too enhances this ability to, um, to not feel protected and to not feel safe because there's so much pressure for young people to utilize technology in an inappropriate way. Right. Right. And um, there's, there is unfortunately a lot of pressure for that and mm -hmm. it's not always an easy situation to kind of navigate yourself out of because again, emotional blackmail um, is just as uh, negatively affecting somebody, and you know, as, as punching them in the, you know, in the face. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think the trouble is they think they're missing something if they don't watch these things. Right. right. And what happens? It turns into an addiction. Can oh my be. God! Then it's so <laughs> hard to break that. Sure. Right. You know. Absolutely. Sending really need counseling and all that. Yeah, that's uh, a whole so. other kind of counseling. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to bring up the military services now. Sure. Uh, there seems to be a lot of trouble with men and women in the, in the services. Any mm -hmm. idea on that? Why that might be going on? In terms of violence. Uh, yeah, violence, state mm -hmm. violence. You know. Yeah, I well, think Lauren. Lauren? Uh, Go ahead. Ahead. Sure. A lot of uh, war veterans or uh, soldiers who come back from a war situation will suffer post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a type of anxiety disorder, and sometimes as a result of that anxiety. Uh, violence will be, as res will be a response, and mm -hmm. anybody who is around them may be affected by this response. This is a little bit different than domestic violence, whereas in domestic violence or relationship violence, the abuser in the situation is making a conscious choice to have power and control over 